Hello and welcome to Our Kids, brought to you by the Jefferson County Public Schools. I'm Fern Creek High School correspondent Shelby Cundiff. A new school year has just started and students are eager to share what they've been up to this summer. But first, let's check out all of the happenings from the first day of school. Good morning, everybody. Hi there, how are you? Good morning. You ready? Yes, sir. All right, let's do it. We're at Central High School. Hey, Jalea, how was your summer? It was really nice. First day of school, we're excited about uh, the energy that's in the building. We're standing in a Montessori classroom. We are the first public high school in Kentucky to offer Montessori education. So that's what's new here. We're very excited about that. We go into education to see kids, to interact with kids, and to know that those buses are rolling right now. I go to school at Central High School, and I am in the pre-med magnet. I'm really excited. This is my last year, so I'm really excited to come back and be able to learn new things. I teach in the pre-med magnet here at Central High School. It's very important because we introduce the kids to health care. We show them the endless possibilities and how far they can go in health care. I've been preparing all summer, getting everything ready, just perfect for the first day and for this year to flow smoothly. I didn't leave here until 11.30 last night because I had teachers putting the final bows on their rooms to prepare for all of our students, not just the Montessori students, but every kid here at Central to make sure that they receive a top-notch education. The message to students is to have a great 17-18 um, get involved in school. School belonging is so important. Um, getting into a, a pathway, a program at their school, extracurricular is going to be so important for their success this year. I really want every kid to have at least one really good experience with real, authentic learning, you know, real, what we call deeper learning. Good morning, Highland Middle School. Welcome to the 2017-2018 school year. This is day one of the 2017-2018 school year, and uh, we're really excited here at Highland Middle School. I pledge allegiance to the flag. It's neat to see the excitement and, and uh, fear and excitement and happiness and anxiety all mixed in, in their eyes, but uh, it, it's been great when they come in. They know where they're going. They have uh, teachers who are coming in to support them. They're receiving a lot of welcoming um, from the adults as they're moving through the building. And we have them in first period class right now. So this is the first hour of their first day in middle school. How exciting is that? I am a fourth grader. My favorite thing is going to PE. Um, going to art. I go to Wilder Elementary and I'll be in second grade. I'm a first grader in Wilder Elementary. All right, let me help you, okay? Come on. I always compare the first day of school to like being five years old and waiting for Santa to come on Christmas Eve. I mean, it's super right. exciting. Your brother's gonna be in my class, and then you're gonna be in your class. So, so friends are gonna be with different friends. I think our students are so wonderful, and I think that they really have every opportunity this year to really improve in their academic and also in just as, as a person. So I think JCPS really works on both things. Good morning. It's going to be a great year. You ready to have a good year? I'm Mr. Perkins, principal, and uh, here at Wilder, we're ready to go. We're, we're excited about the first day of school and look forward to an outstanding school year. Very exciting. Just getting the whole route back to routine and getting them back to bed and yeah, that was the challenging part. My daughter, she's in kindergarten. She's in kindergarten and uh, waiting on the bus so I can get uh, get her getting off the bus. Video. Here, <laughs> heard so many great stories about this school, and I'm honored uh, to be here today. Hope you have a great 2017-18, and I know you will at this fantastic school. Thank you very much. Have a great day. The solar eclipse of 2017 was used as a learning experience for many JCPS students. Cochrane Elementary students incorporated science, math, and art lessons. What's different? It looks like it's about to rain. It looks like mm. it's about to rain. It looks like the sun's setting, but it's not. It looks, yes, I love it. This is Cochrane Elementary. We're in Old Louisville, and we are celebrating our solar eclipse of 2017. We are enjoying the start of the, what is it, Lamont? Solar eclipse. The solar eclipse, absolutely. The moon 
comes in front of the sun and then it blocks the um earth's the sun's path and it makes the solar eclipse. We started this process and planning back in the spring. Remember we did our experiment in the class, how? It hits pretty much every subject, so it's kind of like a teacher's dream. Is the size of the sun different today? So right now it actually looks like an orange moon, like those moons you see on TV. But it's going to be right in the middle, 96% of the sun. No, it's just not going outside to watch the eclipse. There are lots of lessons that are connected to what we're doing today. Um, for example, in fourth grade, they created journals in art class, and the children, as they go out to see the eclipse uh, four or five times throughout the afternoon, they're journaling and drawing what they're seeing. So they're gonna be able to keep this journal forever. The sun is 100 times, 400 times bigger than um, the moon. Well, we're doing the 360 recording because uh, when it's all done, we're going to input it onto the computer and then we're going to use, we use an Oculus Rift, it's a virtual reality headset, and we're going to actually recreate the eclipse. This is amazing. It looks like you have a big bite in it. So exciting. You know, it's, it's just a phenomenon and it's so nice to see children getting this experience. Um, and it, it's, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. That is awesome! And at Ballard High School, students enjoy the solar phenomenon from the football field. If it's a once in a lifetime event, um, I don't want to be the reason that, I, that, that students were deprived of that experience. Um, and I also think that uh, it's a great way to connect to the experiences of ancient cultures and to treat these celestial phenomena with um, a scientific mind and um, with, with the knowledge that we have today and compare that to the way that these things were perceived in the ancient past. So that's why we're here. Um, well, I brought my yearbook class out here. Um, this is one of those once every 40 years, once in a lifetime kind of events. Um, I felt like it was something that was really important that we document, not just for the yearbook, but for their own sakes. Um, something that they had a memory of and were able to take with them. I saw um, a yellow ring in the sky with the moon going over the sun and it looked pretty cool because you could see it, you know, all shiny and bright. It's exciting to watch. Pretty cool, you know, it's not really what I expected it would be, but I expected it to get to really dark, but uh, it, we're not at full totality, so it's, a, it's an experience and it's something that I'm glad I did. This summer, the Literacy and Robotics Camp at Shelby Traditional Elementary gave students a chance to build and program robots. What is it? Home and Bucky are robots. You're at Shelby Elementary School, and our camp is Literacy and Robotics. And the children are learning here how to um, incorporate robotics into their everyday life so that hopefully they will go on to be roboticists and want to pursue something in the technology field. I like the fact that we get to build, and I like to build stuff. My favorite thing would probably be the part that I meet new people and new friends. The hardest part is when you have to like build it, like actually build it. So we've got the small gear pairing the big gear pairing the medium gear. So we've got to just change things around. The rewarding part about it is like when you actually like get to make it move. Right now we are building a horse buggy. You can have fun and learn at the same time, so that's why I like this camp. Robots are starting to become more popular in our generation now, so it's kind of important because that's what's going to be in our future, and if you don't know about our future, then you probably won't know what to do in the future. The favorite part is actually doing this because I really love Legos. It helps me in reading because we actually have literacy too, so we're actually reading books and doing robotics at the same time. This might help me become a roboticist. How cool is that? We are reading a book um, called Robotics, and so it talks about robotics and how it has expanded into NASA and the military. And the other book is called Robot Army Rampage, and they really enjoyed that because it's a suspense novel. Yeah, flip flop it. There you go. And it's okay if you mess up. You can always start again, but it might be a little frustrating because you don't want to do it over again, but you should always try and try again because everybody doesn't get it right the first time. If I make a mistake and we try it, we have to sometimes, I would 
uh, break a piece apart and look inside if there's something wrong with it. Because that's what's holding the two sides together. They actually thrive off of what people would consider failure because they don't think of it that way. It's just simply what can I do to change this so that my robot can move or my, my robot can um, do whatever task that it, they want it to do. They actually don't look at it as failure and that's what I love is that they understand that if you keep doing something over and over again a different way that you'll have a different outcome. Oh, can I put the gear on? How many? Rangeland Elementary School hosted a literacy and yoga camp where students learn techniques to center themselves and find calm. You take the back of your, your foot, whichever one you want to choose, and you put your first hand out and you kind of lean forward. Literacy and Yoga is a program funded by the Department of Diversity, Equity, and Poverty, and it just incorporates literacy with uh, the yoga piece and every day the kids come to school and we have a particular book that we're reading. We're working on different fourth grade common core standards. You've been reading this book, uh, Geronimo still in. It's a pretty good book. I like it. It's about a mouse who is an author and he is going to his nephew's school for career day and he doesn't want to let him down. And the part that I like was the end of the story. The end of the story was about Geronimo saving the lizard. Perseverance is a big theme that we've been really uh, focusing on and the kids really seem to get it. Just, uh, you know, never give up. Something will always go wrong. Don't let that deter you from your goals. Downward facing dog. This is me and my brother playing uh, <coughs> Minecraft. We do some poses. We do things that are fun. Breathe in once and you sigh out. Wow. You're doing yoga. You you feel like you want to give up because the first day I tried this and I never done it. I was like I ain't ready to do this. Like my back was hurting and my feet were hurting and I was, it was terrible for me. And I was just like you know what. I have to have perseverance a whole bunch, but now it's pretty easy to do. They've had a really good time. They've learned and been exposed to a lot of things they hadn't been exposed to before, and it's just been really neat to see them experience new things. We have more great stories about JCPS students. Stay tuned. My name is Atra Alobudi. I am a seventh grade math teacher here in Alma City Academy South. I will give you about three, four minutes I would like to see the work. My job here to teach, that things I really like to do every day. Teach the young lady in seventh grade how to be and believe in self doing math and real math. Most of my young lady in the classroom, they don't see the connection. Oh, why I should learn this? Why I need to learn this? I have a calculator. So that's why I'd like to highlight it in my, through my lesson plan, through my activity in the classroom, through my project, to make connection between what they learn in a classroom and how they going to use it in real life. I love teaching. I love work with students and especially young lady like the one I work with in this building. I enjoy it when I solve a math problem. I really enjoy it. I am Atra Lugudi and I am JCPS. Welcome back to Our Kids. I'm Fern Creek correspondent Shelby Cundiff. JCBS students had the chance to attend an immersive Mandarin Chinese language camp at Field Elementary called Star Talk. We're located in the beautiful Emmett Field Elementary School. And we are participating in the Asia Institute Crane House's Mandarin Language Star Talk program. The Star Talk camp is uh, funded by the State Department. It's targeted to get students interested in learning a foreign language, Chinese. Uh, in order to get them to study it later, maybe in college, or to pursue it as an interest once they become adults. And that's uh, really interesting and important, especially considering that students learning other languages is going to be imperative in this more global world. The world is growing and diversifying at a really intense rate. I mean, people are slow, are getting together, like they learn a new language, and that is vital for a job. My family is from China, so if I travel to China, I would like to learn to speak so I can communicate a bit easier, and I would like to learn more about like China and its culture in general. This is a complete immersion program. There's no English spoken here. Kids truly learn when they're immersed in the language. 
cha, cha han hao fu. Which is, you point at the teapot and say cha, cha. That's not teapot in your head translating. That's just cha. You point at something, you say its Chinese name. That becomes that Chinese name. They hear the sounds, they hear the consonants, the phonemes over and over and over again, which helps them get their proficiency level to a very, very high level after only two weeks. During the school year, I also do a Chinese class, but it is a lot different. They mostly focus on the characters, but here they mostly focus on speaking. We have had a lady teach us Tai Chi. We went to the Crane House building and we did Chinese paper cutting and we made dumplings. I like the Tai Chi fan dance. It was a fan dance that incorporates fan dancing and Tai Chi. So it is a little bit of both. Moving like really slowly like this. Like I like it because it gives you like inner peace and also like you're aware of your body and also you're aware of the fan. Like the fan is part of you yet it's not. It's beautiful what we're doing here in the, the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Uh, our program, our curricula is geared toward teaching Mandarin, but also incorporating the joys and beauties of Kentucky as well. Student interns worked with the JCPS Computer Education Support Department and helped lead a science, technology, engineering, and math camp at Young Elementary. We are currently at Young Elementary. We have Young and Vic students here today. This is a, kind of a Y program uh, versed with a computer ed and Jefferson County Public School program. We're kind of uniting together this summer. I don't want the line to be about that thick. Our part of the program with computer education support is to um, bring different technologies to students that they may have not seen. It's a summer learning loss prevention. It's a program. It's a partnership between JCPS and the YMCA. Uh, we have JCPS teachers um, spend time with them in the classroom in the afternoon. We do swim lessons, um, field trips, uh, STEM activities. Once it starts blinking, why? So I am part of uh, JCPS's CES program, and I am a technology student ambassador. And we're here working with the kids. Uh, we're demonstrating technology to them, kind of focusing on science, technology, engineering, and math. Help young kids involved in social skills and technology help them become a better engineer when they grow up and want to be an architect or programming. We have visits from the STEM bus who does some JCPS programming that comes and brings some little robotics. We came in the door just a minute ago when we got f high fives all the way across so they love working with the the older students. So you just hold it until she white. And what we have today are these little robots called Ozobots that they're going to play around with and just see how these things read code off of paper and how they utilize that to perform functions. It's kind of fun and exciting. They give you a lot of attention and they listen more than they talk. The student ambassadors have been trained all year long on different technologies that we take out into schools. So they go back and help their schools individually all over Jefferson County Public Schools and then they help us during the summer and uh, during professional developments at night. It's good to see them having fun, and that's what they focus on, but like we can see the progress. Student ambassadors teach me something every day. I hope it encourages me, and I think it definitely will encourage me to work in the community more and to engage and help teach other people about technology. What is your name? Adonis. Adonis. The Summer Boost Program at Roosevelt Perry Elementary gave incoming first graders the chance to improve their reading skills. Yes. We're at Roosevelt Perry. It's one of our six sites for our summer literacy boost. It's for rising first grade students. It's a very intensive reading program that we identified students from their February assessment that needed a little boost in reading and so we invited them to the program and parents enrolled them. Third step was to put a little water inside. We have some of the best of the best teachers working because we have targeted teachers that are reading recovery trained, um, SIM trained, which is a program that reading recovery um, based, and our Bellarmine Literacy Project teachers. And they use a well-balanced literacy approach to teaching the students. If they come every day, they'll have over 50 hours of intensive reading instruction to help boost their reading level. She said, the pigs are all back in the pig pig. They really do enjoy it. I think it gives them an opportunity because there's um, three teacher, two to three teachers in a classroom, and so there are, there's a lot of support for them, so they're getting a lot of attention. And it just, I think they feel important because they're getting the extra attention. 
So this is a great way that we bring them into the district with some great teachers and they're giving additional instructional hours, but they also do a lot of fun activities with them. Open the gate. Don't open the gate. And students showed off their new skills at a summer learning celebration at Indian Trail Elementary. Welcome to the Indian Trail Elementary School Summer Program Closing Ceremony. in our classes what we call um, the elements of dance and creative dance. Okay. They're going to perform a dance for you right now called Celtic Sweep. Now you're going to see the Ola Grit do a performance for you today. And what you're going to see them perform today is um, based on a ballet called Scotch Symphony, which was choreographed by the famous ballet maker George Balanchine. phenomenal ladies and we've been studying the basics in theater. What we're going to be doing is we're going to take one of our mini books. We will be doing Mufaro's Beautiful Daughters and we are going to be telling that through a series of tableaus. The king has set a proclamation saying that whoever is the most worthy and most beautiful daughter in all the land shall be his king. Oh, give me that letter. No, thank you. It's okay, I both can go. <laughs> Three things that we focused on during hip hop was choreography, performing, and I'm so glad that I remembered to tell them that it's very important that when you are going to a performance, you have to be a great audience. We have more great stories about JCPS students. Stay with us. JCPS serves over 100,000 students. And with that, a lot of waste is generated. We need to do our part to recycle because it can serve natural resources, help the environment, and save money. When we recycle, we put less coal and gases into the power plant, which reduces the amount of toxins in the atmosphere. We are JCBS and we recycle. Yeah! I'm neurosurgeon Shad Bidiwala, Seneca High School class of 1989. I am JCPS. I'm Ballard High School junior Brianna Owens, and I've been selected for the Wharton School of Business Summer Institute. I am JCPS. I'm Marshall Goldsmith, Valley High School class of 1967. Executive leadership coach, I am JCPS. I'm Justin Cornwell, Eastern High School class of 2007, and I played a young Muhammad Ali. I am JCPS. We are JCPS. Welcome back to Our Kids. I'm Fern Creek correspondent Shelby Cundiff. Even our teachers got in on the learning over the summer. JCPS held their first deeper learning seminar to give educators tools to improve their teaching skills. Excite there's excitement, smiles, and people are buzzing about more clarity with understanding what deeper learning is, uh, what it is not, and that this is something that is dedicated to doing for all students. We have been using Twitter and saw the power of Twitter and how it can connect educators virtually. We've had a, the media lounge upstairs, that's unprecedented, um, really helping people to get plugged in and showing how they can communicate within their schools and across the district. She did do this. I yeah, think I did too many turns. Yeah, I did. Ah, you made him say it. This deeper learning, it makes kids have to problem solve on their own. They have to find a way to complete something without teacher help and figure it out in groups of kids, get some talking and laughing like we were just doing. So, <laughs> extra music, it's got Sparrow dance on it, like you select that. There's other, yeah, I know. I know. It's amazing. It's pretty crazy. So what you can do is ultimately design the structures that influence those behavior and mindsets. Well, I mean, thus far I've gotten, some, you know, specific ideas of 
tools and things I can ho hopefully incorporate into my classroom for next year. Uh, engaging students in a way that uh, is meaningful, authentic. Well, a lot of our students, what they do is just memorize everything, then later on, just for a test, and later on, just forget about it. So deeper learning is making sure they're not only memorizing, but actually understanding the text and making sure they actually understand and how to apply it in day-to-day -day life. So it's not like, oh, I'm only studying this just for this one test I can pass and make my parents happy, but it's only just to make sure that I'm actually understanding this at the school. The networking is just wonderful. I've met so many different people that I can reach out to for support, for collaboration of lessons. That is, this is just amazing. I, I love it, and then I love seeing my colleagues here just all on one accord. JCPS offers free lunches to students throughout the summer on the Mobile Summer Nutrition Bus. Let's check out the action. They love the bus. And then today was Grab Bag Tuesday, so I always have a little trinkets and stuff. How are you doing? You gonna eat on here? They get the meals at school, you know, the breakfast and the lunch. And sometimes if they're in an after school program, we do serve an a after school uh, meal. But you know, some kids don't live near a school or a community center where they can come and get a nice meal, you know, for lunch. But this way we take it to them and so it makes it available and it's free also so at least I know they're getting something over the summertime. Some of these kids probably hadn't had anything, maybe a light breakfast, you know, but today they got something, a well-balanced meal. Apples, my milk, and my juice, and then my, my turkey. You know, you have your, your vegetable, your fruit, your entree, your juice, and they have their grain, so they are getting everything they need. They really enjoy it, and I enjoy serving them too. Lastly, let's hear some advice upperclassmen at Ballard High School have for incoming freshmen. My advice to the freshmen is to uh, make friends with the right people. Um, my advice to incoming freshmen is to stay caught up on your work and don't go to sleep in school. My advice for eighth graders is to do your homework and walk on the right side of the hallway. Um, try not to be late for class. My advice for eighth graders is to walk your classes when you first get your schedule so you don't get lost like I did. <laughs> Thanks for watching our show. We hope you enjoyed it. This is the crew from Fern Creek that helped put this show together. You can find full episodes of Our Kids on the JCPS YouTube channel. Until next time, keep supporting our kids. Yay! Yay!